What's going on everyone and welcome to my first of three wooden roller coaster countdowns. In this countdown, I will be ranking all of the wooden coasters I have ridden from Great Coasters International. During the 2022 season, 14 GCIs operated in the United States and I have had the opportunity to ride all of them. Please note this list will not include Ghost Rider from Knott's Berry Farm. While the recent retracking was completely performed by GCI, I associate this more with its original designer, Custom Coasters International. Some traits of GCIs include quick and fast paced transitions, high bank turns, as well as many utilizing curved drops and stationed fly throughs. In addition, most GCIs use Millennium Flyer trains, which are comfortable trains with a lap bar coming down from in front of you rather than the side. With that all said, let's get into the list. Starting off at 14, we have Invader from Busch Gardens Williamsburg. As of 2022, this is really the only GCI in the US aimed at being a family coaster but along with SeaWorld Entertainment, they did a nice job with this. This ride features an enclosed straight down drop, but from there on, Invader stays low to the ground with quick airtime pops and turns. The thrill level might be a little lower on this ride, but for the target audience, this is a nice coaster a part of Busch Gardens' lineup. Heading down south to Florida, this is White Lightning from Fun Spot America. This out and back layout didn't really provide any forces on the airtime hills or transitions, but I also found this ride a little on the rougher side. One thing I've noticed with Millennium Flyer trains is the roughness seems more pronounced on those versus some of the other wooden coaster trains. That is definitely the case with White Lightning, with the exception being the portion that has received a Titan track. Overall, kind of an underwhelming ride to me, and definitely the weaker of the two larger Orlando Woodies. The only dueling GCI in the US is Lightning Racer from Hershey Park. This might be a hot take, but if it wasn't for the racing aspect, this might be last on my list. While this ride isn't rough, the forces on this ride are nowhere to be found. This ride is highlighted by the few interaction points with the other train. In my opinion, this is the Hershey Park GCI that should have been overhauled by RMC, rather than the other one you'll see later on this list. Now moving on to a GCI I feel is a bit overhated. This is Roar from Six Flags America. While there aren't any standout moments on Roar, I was able to enjoy some of the airtime moments and laterals. This ride also uses PTC trains, which I feel absorbs more roughness than the Millennium Flyers do. I would understand if Six Flags America RMC'd Roar to give Six Flags America a standout ride like Six Flags Discovery Kingdom did with their clone of Roar. However, as a solid wooden coaster, I don't understand the hatred towards this ride. Next up is another Six Flags GCI. This is American Thunder from Six Flags St. Louis. This ride is similar to Roar in that there are a few solid moments of airtime and lateral forces on the turns. However, like the rides previous to this, there aren't a whole lot of memorable moments on here either. Another thing that might be hurting this ride, at least to me, is that this ride is located in a park with two other solid wooden coasters. While American Thunder definitely has a role in Six Flags St. Louis's lineup, it's not the best Woody at its own park. One I think many people will disagree with me on, but here's the now defunct Wildcat at Hershey Park. In my defense, I was only ever able to get one ride on this, and it was in the front row. For being the original GCI, I actually found the layout to be decent. There was airtime at several moments on the ride, and I don't remember it being too rough. I get why this ride is being RMC'd, but I would have been interested to see GCI modify it with their Titan track instead. Starting to ramp up the GCI quality now, here is Kentucky Rumbler from Beach Bend. One of the unique aspects to this ride is there's a pre-drop and a turnaround building up speed heading into the main drop. I personally prefer that to the standard GCI curve drops. From what I remember this ride was forceful, but it was one of the rougher GCIs. Beach Bend is located in a fairly open plot of land, and it is a smaller park, but it's pretty neat to have a large GCI dominate the sites around the park. The newest GCI to open in the US would be Texas Stingray from SeaWorld San Antonio. This ride was the perfect fit to go into SeaWorld's lineup. I also love the front car design of this train. The reason I think this ride is a little lower in my rankings is how the train rises at points in the first half that slow down the pacing. The second half though stays low to the ground and does have better airtime and lateral force. In some ways, I feel GCI played this layout a little safe, but I feel like it's a nice stepping stone coaster. One of the widely popular GCIs comes in at 6 with Mystic Timbers from Kings Island. My biggest critique with this ride has always been that I almost find it too smooth. I enjoy some roughness from a wooden coaster, and Mystic Timbers, at least to this point in its lifespan, hasn't really provided that. This ride does stay pretty low to the ground, making for good pacing, but the airtime is rather weak. I've enjoyed the what's in the shed gimmick at the end of the ride, as it's just something extra added to the experience that didn't need to be there. It's a good ride overall, and is the best coaster at Kings Island. Maybe the GCI that surprised me the most is Apocalypse from Six Flags Magic Mountain. This ride is similar to Kentucky Rumbler, as it also has that pre-drop. 
Unlike Kentucky Rumbler, the ride is a bit smoother, and the airtime and lateral forces are certainly more pronounced. The pacing on here may be amplified due to the Southern California heat. This ride also has a station flyby, which for those waiting in the station, provides a deafening roar as the train goes by. In a park that features 20 roller coasters, it's impressive that I found this to be the third best ride at Magic Mountain. Next up is another GCI that deserves more love, and that's Prowler at Worlds of Fun. This ride is very similar to Mystic Timbers as they both feature out and back layouts. The one thing Mystic Timbers benefits over Prowler is that the pacing is always consistent, whereas Prowler is a little slower during the morning rides. That said, Prowler has significantly more powerful elements compared to Mystic Timbers, which focuses more on throwing as many smaller elements at you as possible. Prowler is soon going to have another GCI and Zambezi Zinger to contend with at Worlds of Fun, so it's possible more people get out to ride this in 2023 and see just how strong a ride this is. A GCI that just seems to get better and better every time I ride it is Thunderhead at Dollywood. While I haven't made multiple visits to several parks on this list, Dollywood has probably done the best job retracking and taking care of their GCI that I've noticed. I feel that the smoother track has allowed for the pacing to increase and the forces are more pronounced since the first time I rode this in 2018. I find this ride is also helped by how compact it is and that the elevated turns don't hurt this ride's pacing. With how much Lightning Rod in the same park has struggled with downtime and its modifications, Thunderhead may soon be my favorite ride at this park. The ride that ended up being my 100th coaster credit was Renegade at Valley Fair. I truly have a soft spot for both this coaster and this park. This was the first GCI road that really gave me strong sustained airtime, as well as some of the most unsuspecting elements I've experienced. Renegade starts with a unique S curve drop followed by a strong flow to airtime help. The highlight of the ride for me comes right after, with a turnaround leading into a sudden drop that left me stunned the first time I rode it. The rest of the ride really focuses mostly on airtime hills, which are enhanced by the strong pacing. It is another ride that does need to warm up some from the morning rides, but the afternoon and night rides on Renegade are just outstanding. Taking the top spot on this list, and frankly it's not really close, here is Gold Striker from California's Great America. This ride compared to any other GCI listed here is significantly more aggressive. The ride starts with an enclosed first drop and from there on, it doesn't feel like it slows down until the end. The airtime in Gold Striker is actual ejector that launches you out of your seat. The lateral forces and the perfect amount of roughness really throws your body all over the place. I don't know how this twister layout compared to some of the others managed to be this more intense, but I love it. The news of Cedar Fair selling off California's Great America really was disappointing to hear, but I'm hoping for the off chance this ride might not be gone in the next decade. And that concludes my GCI rankings that I have ridden. As I mentioned, these are only the GCIs located in the United States. While Gold Striker is the cream of the crop in the US, there are a few GCIs in China as well as a couple in Europe that could top Gold Striker. My following rankings will go into some of the other wooden coaster manufacturers. Until then, have a great day and take it easy.